Okay. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us uh, today. My name is uh, Deanna Ting. I am the senior hospitality editor for a travel um, and and dining and wellness um, media intelligence platform called Skift, uh, based out of New York City. Uh, so I am here today with the uh, VRMA president, Jody Rafosco, as well as Carol Sharoff. Um, from Atlantic uh, Vacation Homes. And both Jody and Carol uh, are um, members of the VRMA board, and Jody is actually the president of VRMA's board of directors. Both of them have extensive experience in the vacation rental industry. Jody, for more than a decade, and you're also the co owner of Taylor Made uh, Deep Creek Vacations. Right. And Carol, you are the co-owner of Atlantic Vacation Homes. I'm the owner. Oh, the owner and founder. <laughs> okay, great. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us today, um, both of you. Um, both of you have had so much experience in this industry. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, you know, what was this industry like when you first started? And how has it changed over those years? Why don't I go first? Because I, I started before you. Well, yeah. well uh, yes and no. Yes. Uh, true. Completely true. So... Um, so my short story is that I had this uh, antique shop in Gloucester, Massachusetts, which is a tourist destination that was known for summer rentals, you know, people's homes that they would rent out. But I had this antique shop, and I had another career in urban planning. But people would come into my antique shop, and they'd ask me if I knew of any houses for rent. And so I said yes, and I started renting houses in the neighborhood. And that's sort of how I started. And then I was trying to get more knowledge and information about how do you do this. So I mean, I made up everything that I did. And then um, I, I couldn't find it. There wasn't, we didn't have the internet then. You couldn't Google it. <laughs> um, there were a couple of companies in Vermont. And I talked to them and, and made up my own system. And it wasn't until much later that I learned about the VRMA. Uh, and I've been a member of that for about 20 years. And that just changed my life. And, in many, many ways uh, from a business perspective because I met other people that were doing what I was doing. I didn't know anyone else. Yeah, what was the industry like back then and how has it, how has it changed in that time? Well, it was, it was, there's always been people that have, you know, now we're calling them rent by owners, but there were always individuals that had second homes um, along, in, in my case, along the coastline that, and by beaches or, you know, some beautiful uh, place that would be a tourist des destination and they rented maybe one house out. So when I met the, the industry, there were maybe at that time, right, n right now there's, I know, 683 companies that belong to the VRMA. I would say back then, there, if there was 100, that would have been a lot. So some tourist areas, like the Outer Banks, and certainly Jody can talk about her experience with her family, they'd been ongoing for a longer time as rental agencies. But I would say the New England area didn't have anything like that. And, and Jody, um, what was your experience like? How did you kind of get into this industry, and how right. have you seen it change since? Well, my parents had a vacation rental company when I was in college in Western Maryland. Well, I grew up um, outside of Baltimore, and so they would rent their home. They would start living in Baltimore, which four hours away. So they would mail keys. They would, I mean, we had the remote check-ins because we didn't have an office up there. Well, my parents didn't have an office up there. So I um, ended up going to college, and I would was the first hot tub tech in Deep Creek. I cleaned houses. Basically, I did anything that no one else wanted to do. Mom's like, Jody's coming. She needs money. So I did, I did every. I pretty much grew up. I worked for Mom for, I ended up moving to Deep Creek, worked for her for 12 years from hot tubs, housekeeping. I was reservations. I went into advertising, public relations, marketing director of owner relations and then after 12 years I was general manager when they sold it but to talk about what the industry was like then it was um, mom and dad were the original rent by owner they rented their homes that no one else could rent and they started getting more because they saw how good mom and dad were at what they did um, they had whiteboards for reservations so like I, you know I was a college kid so I'd be like what would you do if I just kind of like glanced over it and it wiped it all off. Um, they had keyboards with keys on them. Um, but it was very different than what it is. Like now, like we, they sold their company in 2007. I started TaylorMade in 2008 with my brother and my husband. And Chad knew immediately that we wanted to have, um, we wanted to have remote for our, like escape. We wanted virtual, everything virtual. We didn't want to have a whole um, office full of um, 
all the equipment to run your property management. We knew a lot of things. So where my parents started their company, they were just like fell upon it. You know what I mean? They didn't have any background. I had background when we started TaylorMade and I had VRMA that actually had so many associates in this industry that I reached out when I started and asked about contracts, policies, procedures, because I knew how to run a company but I didn't know how to start a company. So it was really different, but if I had to tell my dad that he had to work on social media and do tweets and do Facebook posts <laughs> and do all that stuff, my dad would say, I'm crazy. And then, but he was a pioneer. He knew the internet was coming. He was really good with the website. And he did, um, he, he always launched that. And our, our website for our old company was fantastic. So we knew when we started this, what we wanted to do online and what we didn't want to do. But you have to just keep changing. But yeah, it was really different than it right. is now. It sounds like from both of your different experiences and per, um, perspectives that the industry has really become a lot more professionalized, a lot yep. more influenced by technology, and it's also much bigger. There's just a lot yeah. more people playing in this space right now. And more well aware of the, our space. Mm -hmm. So I think people like really didn't understand yeah. before what vacation rentals were. What do you think they? What did they think of before, and what do they think of it now? Well, you. you no, well, I was going to say the world has changed. Mm -hmm. So in terms of technology and before the internet, you know, I had a file drawer and it was filled with listing sheets because I had maybe 20 houses or 25 houses. And every time, I, and then I would go down to the photo store and have copies made of a picture. And so I, I would picture, I'd have a picture of the house and I would glue it on this piece of paper and mail it. And I would mail contracts. Everything mm -hmm. was, it was slow. When you think about it now, you couldn't really do an, a, a last minute booking because you didn't have the capacity to get a contract signed unless you were at the house with you know which I did do meeting people there so um, but but I think the main thing is that because the world has changed and technology has been so you know exponentially growing that it behooves every single vacation rental manager to figure out a way to keep up with it because there's no going back. I was going to say, and then the fax machine came, right? <laughs> I love the fax. <laughs> I'm like, the fax, I machine love the fax machine came. Which, by the way, when I started 10 years ago, my brother told me I was not allowed to have one. I'm like, I have some of those older owners <laughs> that want to fax me. Their, I actually have an owner that faxes me their notes still right now. That's e-fax. Um, what I have noticed that has changed um, dramatically, even in the 10 years of TaylorMade, is the expectations of my guests and my owners. Mm -hmm. So everything... Yeah, it's become more instantaneous. You know, my mom, who was like the like queen, I feel, of customer service, who said, you know, it's the sunrise rule. We have to, you know, send an email back by the end of the day, where it's now within like minutes. You have to be faster. You got to, you know, you got to make sure your pictures are up to date. You have to do 3D tours. You have to do um, drone photography. I feel like you just, there is a lot more with technology because guests expect more. And that's the age of the internet. Right. But that's also helped grow your company. It also helps with all kinds of other things. So. Yeah, definitely. I guess, you know, speaking as business owners yourselves um, who run vacation rental businesses, what what are your sort of own biggest personal challenges in this industry today? Or what are, what are you finding are, are the most difficult obstacles for you as a business owner uh, or working in this industry and in this space? And what do you think would be the best solutions for those challenges or problems that you have? I have a couple that I'm that I've been fighting, not fighting, but I found them challenging, is it's always been employees and getting good employees come in, um, getting them to stay, other things you need to offer to entice them to, to come. I mean, being in a resort area, most of your employees don't live in that area, so you got to pull from other like locations, further drives. That's been something that we've been finding, but we are also changing things that we offer our guests, or our, our employees. So we're changing, we're trying to make things more flexible. Like my mom owned the rental company. She's, no summer, you cannot ask off for a summer, ever, like ever. Now we realize like people have families and the millennials really expect that flexibility and they want their freedom to go. So we've changed those rules. Um, so I feel like we've done some stuff. I still feel like we need to do more. Mm -hmm. But that's been one of our challenges. Yeah, I think employees is a, is a big challenge mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, there, there came a moment in time, and I, 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 like Jody, I run a family business mm -hmm. now. My Two of my children are part of it. Um, but number one, it's keeping up with technology. Mm -hmm. And I say to new employees and people that we interview, I want to be the worst user of technology in the company. Like, I will not hire anyone that's below me in <laughs> skill. And I think I'm pretty good, because compared to some of my friends at my generation, I'm 
pretty up to date with it, it. <laughs> but, but I don't want, we hired someone not that long ago who really didn't understand the internet and was ruining our records and using our software and putting things in wrong properties. Mm -hmm. And so there's that piece too. It's also about hiring the right people that keep the spirit of the and the culture of the company going. Right. And um, I'll be speaking at 115 about diversity. And that's like a major part of it, um, right. is to make sure that your uh, staff and matches the diversity of your guests, your homeowners match, and that there's the, the, the ability to bring in people uh, of all different kinds of backgrounds and races and nationalities um, has to be reflected in your staff. Mm -hmm. As both of you are speaking, it's interesting because I know, um, you know, this industry has has been around in existence for quite some time. You know, your, your parents were involved. Mm -hmm. You basically grew up in it, um, but it's also still sort of just now, like you both were saying, like really beginning to mature and really yeah. beginning to evolve and really beginning to be impacted by technology and things like that. And I think. I, I look at that and I see so many parallels between what's happening in the vacation <coughs> rental space and what has already sort of happened in the hotel space, you know, um, sort of like a, a more mature accommodations market, if you will. Uh, seeing what's happened with hotels and in terms of like online distribution and things like mm -hmm. that, are you guys sort of paying attention to that and kind of learning from those what, what you've seen happen to hotels and trying to make sure that maybe the same thing doesn't necessarily happen to you guys in the vacation right. rental space? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very important to pay attention to what's going on with hotels because it is a more, more mature thing because even though vacation rentals have been going on for really long, it's really just coming to light for people. Right. Um, and people are still starting to recognize, and you have to give contribution to that to like Airbnb and VRBO that have been doing a lot of the advertising to make it more mainstream. But you know, it's, um, I lost my train of fact, thought with that. But I do think like with the, everything that's going on with the online travel agencies, with like hotels, like you gotta be smart. Like I've talked to so many people in this industry that just started out. I said, so talk to me about what you're doing for marketing. And they're like, we just put our properties on Airbnb. I'm like, that's it? I'm like, do you have a strong website? Do you do email marketing? Do you do, I mean, do you diversify? And they don't. And that's something like a VRMA that we're trying to educate people to learn some of that stuff because you need to diversify because of things that you see in the hotel. Like, they've gotten smart with some of the stuff. So they've reeled back, like for us, you know, the, the big thing that happened in, what was it, February 6th was Book Direct. Well, you know, it's interesting. A lot of owners don't even know what that means. Like, I have my own owners that still book on Airbnb and VRBO and see all that increased service charge. They just don't understand it. So there is still education to do, um, but I think we need to be aware, we need to watch what's going on with the hotels, and also work on our own marketing, and it can't stay stagnant, like ever. Right. Like, it has to constantly be changing. Yeah. Carol, you know, you 20, 20 years ago, I think one of the first Vacation Rental Management Association conferences I went to, and it's interesting that we're here today at the Ritz, um, was, I believe he was the president of the Ritz, and one of the things he said, which is so, oh, I so always re remembered, yeah. yeah, yeah, he was unbelievable was you people, I don't like that expression, those of you who are involved in the vacation rental industry are so incredibly lucky because, let's put it this way, as the owner of a hotel, or owner or manager, president of a hotel, I had to raise capital. I had to get, you know, all sorts of money to come in so I could build a $5 million hotel. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got other people's money that you're working with, and you don't have to raise that capital. So. Mm -hmm. That struck me, and it, it's a huge responsibility for us to rent out someone else's house to people that we don't know and hope that they take care of it, you know? But, but I also want to say that when you asked about the changes in the industry, um, I think that, and I can see what's happened to Massachusetts, the hotel industry is extremely strong, the lobbying industry. The vacation rental industry is gaining on that now. But the hotel industry is a little concerned about us because we have an unlimited supply of housing. Right, a flexible supply. And a flexible mm -hmm. supply. We don't have to raise that money, and they know that they're going to be in for a run for their money at this point because we're growing. We don't have any, we don't dislike the hotel industry, but what we have to keep in mind is that we are renting people's houses, and the houses are a commodity. And I can see some of the changes now that have lost what Tina Whalen was talking about, you know, with the, the whole empathy side, the emotional right. piece of it. That's what we represent, an opportunity to be a part of someone's community, 
to be a part of their world, their home, to fit in, and that that's key. Right. So perhaps maybe this industry needs to, to make sure that it doesn't get too professionalized to the point where it sort of forgets about the, 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 the hospitality that... The reason the, behind yeah. started mm -hmm. it. Right. If you yeah. want to go to a hotel, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. You go to a hotel. If you want to go to a hotel that has room service, a, a kitchenette, or if, uh, wonderful. But if you want to have an authentic experience, then you need to be in a vacation rental. Right. Um, kind of switching gears, and you, you mentioned sort of advocacy. So what, what is the Vacation Rental Management Association advocating for primarily this year? What are your biggest, biggest advocacy objectives? The, well, I think they, um, I'm not on the advocacy board, but they are mm -hmm. focusing on certain areas mm -hmm. um, with, you know, proper restrictions and regulations, or I guess fair, I think that's what Matt Curtis was talking to us about, fair regulations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the, de I'm not sure what the details with it, but the advocacy is, it's very important to make sure like your town councils and everybody knows what's going on. And like, I think they were working on toolkits for, um, to give to the, the vacation rental managers to give to their town councils. They're working on a, um, a database to be able to tell vacation rental managers when something's coming up in their town. So to be more involved because it takes a village for that. And like, it's one thing to know things on the state level. It's a whole nother level to know on the county level. Like, like for my area personally, like they would know things on the Maryland level, but my county is trying to increase county accommodation tax. Mm -hmm. And so like that was something I asked them, like, do you have a heat map? Like I want a heat map of not just the states on county accommodation. Mm -hmm. or, I want county by county in the whole country. Right. How cool and like powerful would that be? So we can talk about that. But they are definitely working on advocacy. There's certain, I think there's three or four areas they're focusing on this year, um, but they are also focusing, try to get the knowledge out to everyone in the community. And, and it's because there's so much opportunity in the world of vacation rentals for inventory. Mm -hmm. And now there's a fear, there's a, the need, the fear of who's coming to those houses. And, right. and I worry about that from a diversity point of view, but I also worry about that from an overregulation point of view. So the health, hotel lobby, certainly in Massachusetts, is behind some of the changes that we've seen in changing the regulations so that they're monitored. They have sprinkler systems in their hotel rooms. We rent houses that don't. You, you know, we're a different commodity and they're trying to, in some ways, not all, usurp what we're doing and, and standardize it so it's all the same. But we're two different industries. We have different kinds of needs and it's very frightening in many ways that the some of the local uh, political organizations are looking to squash managed properties in those locales. Uh, the VRMA uh, has a, a full-time person working specifically on advocacy, okay. um, and that's our main full-time staff person. We have two. And it's been great because I've actually been able to reach out to him, and he's been able to look up some bills and do stuff like that, mm -hmm. which you know we never had before. So it's nice that we have right. a go-to person that's a staff member to ask simple questions that anybody can call and ask for. Well. Right. What are your thoughts, sort of, on on the state of where regulations stand in terms of, you know, short-term rentals or vacation rentals, or you know, do you think things could be improved, or do you think things are sort of headed on the in the right track? Um, do you think there's more understanding? Yeah, I think that's going to go by state by state or county uh, by right. county. Or city, city by, by city. Or city yeah. by city. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's different because I think there's a couple bad eggs out there that have really made it go over. Like everybody thinks then that's all prop all managed companies. Like, you know, it, it might be an RB, you know, rent by owner that wasn't able to handle a situation right away or wasn't able to manage things where, or, a pro, or weren't paying their taxes or weren't, you know, licensed. So I think that it's um, an education thing that we need to work on to educate what a property management, like good form, like best practices, you know, what you, noise ordinances, parking, um, things that you should be being neighborly, things like that. And I think that, um, getting that out to everybody has been a big focus. And I would say it's, it's very different everywhere. And it's, in many regards, I find it frightening um, because I think that uh, there's a need for regulations that a lot of towns, cities mm -hmm. and towns, already have. Like, for example, in Massachusetts on December 28th, just uh, the governor signed into law uh, a vacation rental tax. So the hotels are already paying an accommodation tax. And now vacation rentals not only have to pay the state a 5.7% tax, which to everyone else here within 
uh, in the United States, there's only three, and now only two states left that don't charge tax on vacation rentals. So now we have a tax. And now the cities and towns, there's 361 cities and towns in Massachusetts, they can charge a tax as well, up to 12%. So that means that our guests who came to us for the past 20 years and paid X dollars for a room, they're now going to pay at least 5.7% more for the same commodity than they were before. And that creates a major change in the way we operate. And, and Massachusetts includes not only Gloucester and Cape Ann, which compared to Cape Cod is a lot smaller, but we have a, a, lot, a lot of property you know, companies now that have grown in the industry that are going to be affected by this. And it's all because a lot of the town governments are afraid. They're, they're afraid of change. They're afraid of what is considered the Wild West, and they need to be educated. What do you think are the solutions for that? You know, is it um, trying to reach out more to lawmakers or to municipalities, having more of a presence on the Hill? Is it a combination of all those? I was going to say, I think all the above. Mm -hmm. And I think we are trying. Like, um, so VRMA has, like, we have had some conferences in towns that are not allowed, they, they do not allow to vacation rentals. And so, and we've had people ask, Linda, why are you having it there? Well, then what we have done is gone together and as a board and met some of the lawmakers. So I, we saw it more as an opportunity um, and try to met them and explain to them and educate them what vacation rentals are and that toolkit to help, you know, these are things that, you know, all right, so you don't have regulations, but maybe you should talk about parking and maybe you should talk about noise and have ordinances in places, but fair, reasonable ordinances because mm -hmm. um, there is a difference, right. you know, really restrict regulations, you know, and also to realize that these people, you know, um, that have vacation rental homes, they have a right too to be renting. Mm -hmm. But I think it's educating is it the biggest. People Tell don't understand the industry. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what a vacation rental is or does, mm -hmm. and that is a major part of it. What we're doing at Atlantic Vacation Homes, mm -hmm. um, now that we have this tax, uh, which is not only taxing, it's not only a, a financial tax, but there's also going to be a state registry of properties. Um, the homeowners have to have a certain amount of insurance. Um, we're running a session at the end of March for any of the cities and towns in our area that want to come. We'll have our state representatives there, people from the Mass Department of Revenue, uh, to help explain uh, not only to our owners and to our staff, but to rent by owners. Because mm, they they have to be they have to follow the law as it is. And I think like when we started regulations in our area, which was 2006, so what 13 years ago, it was it was started because the lawmakers were uneducated about what we did in the industry. They just weren't aware that we already regulated parking. We weren't just we don't want to shove 20 people in a house. Like they just weren't they weren't educated. And actually, my father got on the board the board that they had and actually controlled the regulations so they were fair and reasonable. And now you know so everybody you know yeah because we don't want to we want to be neighborly. So right. going forward, um, you know, is it I guess too big of a an expectation to expect uh, maybe like the VRMA to to launch more of a consumer facing marketing campaign or education campaign to really educate people about what vacation rentals are or what makes them special what makes them unique you know that yes you can find them on Airbnb but you know there's this whole industry behind that it's not just you know an Airbnb or a home away or mm -hmm. VRBO or I'm wondering, is that something that you guys have discussed or thought about going we're, forward? We're always thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And the VRMA uh, has a wonderful website with, it's filled with information, mm -hmm. vrma.org. It's available to the public. You can you get more information if you're a member of the VRMA. Mm -hmm. And we have different forms of membership. So the smallest member is just someone that has one property, but that wants to grow. Right. So it's... We're, we're, we don't have a rent by owner capacity, but that may change as life goes on and as things seem to be merging. But if you have one property and you want to learn more about what's going on, mm -hmm. then, then you can join as a member. And we have um, a lot of different magazines. We have education, uh, credentialing that we've started this past year, uh, lo lots of new initiatives that will educate our membership so that they can in turn go out and educate their communities and their owners. And we've always been about like lifting the bar on professionalism. And we work together. I mean, there's 700 members and we're always, you know, we're networking together to bring each other to another level of professionalism so that, yes, we can then each member can go into their community and talk about vacation rentals. But 
from what I'm gathering, you're asking is, are we going out to not our our vacation rental sure manager, but to the, the whole community. And talk. I don't think we've talked about that route, and that's mm -hmm. not a bad idea to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's something we have to sit down and discuss, but, like, you know, we've we focused on educating. The vacation rental manager has been our, like, mm -hmm focus to make them better at what they do so people don't think that it's the wild wild west where we are because they do i mean that's something they do think about and so there is people that are, are well behaved really nice property managers and there's ones that kind of kind of just shoot off the head takes resources though My yeah. that's sort of I'm, I'm guessing or surmising the, the purpose for for this summit in particular so i wanted to ask you you know why why did vrma decide to launch a women's summit and what do you hope is going to be achieved here like what, what's the, the the main objective of this, so this we conference? didn't launch it we're we're uh, the presenting sponsor uh, for vr uh, mental uh, um for amy and the women's right. summit mm -hmm. which i was real excited when i heard that she was going to be doing this we were all the board was excited about being a part of it um it's not something where we're looking we're just what we're looking is to show the support we have I mean, honestly, in my what how I see it is, women are the majority of our industry. I mean, they they are. I mean, it's you know, it, and it's like I I could tell you what did I look at my my company alone? When you break it down, it's seventy five percent women, um, and I don't think I stand alone in that. But I we VRMA wanted to be sponsors of the Women's Summit because they want to show the support for you know how to network and to educate each other and to lift ourselves to be better because that's what VRMA is about and this I think it was just it was a perfect fit I really do and I, I mean I'm excited to be here I'm excited to learn from everybody else because I feel like you know even though I've been doing it for over 20 years I learn every time I attend these conferences exactly. I would just say that the Women's Summit is really important but it's hopefully just the first of many. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about diversity, we're not just talking about gender diversity or men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different kinds of gender issues. There's d different kinds of ethnic and, um, and racial issues that all come in an industry that doesn't have perhaps as much diversity as it, as it should have. So I think that the next, as membership chair for the VRMA, uh, we are looking to change that. And, 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 and I think what you're saying is the right thing, Deanna, that every effort that we have to spread the word, uh, we have our website, we have our uh, magazine, we have our weekly magazine, you know, a weekly magazine, mm -hmm. um, and, and any other way to make, bring closure to a pretty broad-based group and bring them in. Do you, um, kind of by extension too, do you sort of have any advice for, for other women who are in this industry, especially some of our, our fellow attendees, yeah. you know, um, or for just people who, who want to get more involved in the vacation rental space or don't know as much about it but, but want to be a part of it? I say reach out. I mean, network. I mean, honestly, when I started TaylorMade, I couldn't talk to my parents because they had a non-compete and not advise all that stuff. Like, I couldn't talk oh, to them. I mean, Thanksgiving used to be a board meeting. So um, I reached out to all my fellow members, and I mean, I'm not kidding. We're giving. Like, this is, I'm not just talking about me and my, like, a few, uh, the whole industry is mm -hmm. giving. And that's because we want everybody to be just as good, if not better, and to get better. And we have to rely on each other. And, you know, something that you might do down in, you know, in Denver, Colorado, is going to be different than what I do in Maryland. But however, that the, the direction you're going is what I want to do. So it's all about lifting. So I think there's a lot out there, but I think that um, if you, what you should be getting out of this stuff is raising your hand, asking for help, helping others, because even if you're a new person to this industry, you have a lot of ideas. I mean, you're an outs, you know, outside looking in. I mean, I love that kind of that that mentality because sometimes we get in that, that box. <laughs> and it's hard to get out of, especially during your busy season. But definitely raise your hand and then get involved. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it, you can get involved and help out and work with each other. So that's my best thing. Yeah, and I would just say that um, the the vacation rental industry is very friendly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's because we are in the hospitality world, and it does, there are introverts, and they have their role, but mm -hmm. there are also extroverts and people that really want to reach out to the broader world and, 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 and sharing. So within our association, um, there's so many of us. I mean, we've sort of splintered off, and there's a couple of different groups. There's a couple of owners groups that I'm a part of, and uh, where one where I bring my team, and um, 
and where people can talk and we're not competing. We don't compete in Gloucester with the Outer Banks or with Jody in mm -hmm. Maryland. And so we can be very open and, and sharing. And, and I love that about this, this community. It's pretty wonderful. I'm going to switch gears a bit yeah. and um, kind of do like a little bit of a quick fire session um, just before we wrap up in a bit. But, you know, there's been so much talk about disruptors in, in the travel space, especially for the past decade or so, especially in vacation rentals. Yeah. Like t 2008 is when Airbnb launched. That was a huge disruptor. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you, what do you think are going to be the next big disruptors? And do you see that coming from like the impact of Google? Um, do you see that voice technology being a, a disruptor? Um, the, the platforms like VRBO and Airbnb sort of increasingly getting more involved into the product themselves, um, seeing increased consolidation in the space. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, and, and disruptors aren't always bad. Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. change is always difficult mm -hmm. for all of us, but at the end of the day, it usually is not a bad thing. So I do think Google's going to be one that we're going to have to be looking at. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. Um, I do think consolidation's happening. You're seeing it left and right right now. And you're seeing with a lot of companies, like gobbling up the other companies, not just in the vacation rental space, but also in the supplier space. So you see that. I mean, we just saw one that, that, that seems to be like, um, I forget the name of the company, but they're taking, they're, they've bought a lot or invested in a lot of the um, tech companies. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be very interesting mm -hmm. and see how that plays that's out. Um, how's that going to do with your, your um, software that you're using? at you know on your property management side not just property management software but like any of your telephone software any of your website providers any of your um any of your efficiencies or apps that you're using so it's going to be interesting but i do think those things are something that we're i'm going to be keeping my eye out for 2019 is the google and the consolidation and and i completely agree with what jody said and i guess the fear that i have um uh, two things one is and um People that know me will laugh that I'm going to say this, but I do worry about data oh, because, course. well, when you run your own company, as I have a women-owned business started myself out of a, an idea, uh, I didn't worry about data. I didn't worry about who was looking over my shoulder and accessing my records. And with consolidation of our, especially of our software companies, mm -hmm. um, it's bad enough with the OTAs and what's some of the changes that are happening there. Mm -hmm. But I just worry that there's no more privacy, that everything is, is there for people to glean from. And, and I see a lot of people in this industry now, sort of, I call them kind of newcomers, and that's fine, that are going back to things. You know, the French expression, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. And, and, and you kind of see it here, that as things, you know, let's bundle, or no, let's unbundle. Let's all go to the OTAs and have one website. Oh no, let, here's an idea. Let's have all these, you know, websites that are about, you know, LGBT travel or, you know, um, you know, what is the uh, Mr. Airbnb and mm -hmm. and and those are really, really, really important. But but that's where it started, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the OTAs kind of came in and kind of took it over. So I, I I worry we're not a hotel. We're an authentic industry, and we need to keep it that way. And we need to protect the information that we have. Mm -hmm. You don't want to play fast and loose with people's information exactly. and, and data. But at the same time, too, are you seeing opportunities to, to sort of capture that information or, or capture, you know, preferences and sort of like getting to know your customers better and using that in ways to sort of improve the guest experience? Yes, and absolutely positively. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? It goes back to the first thing Jody said in your first question mm -hmm. was about, in, in, you know, what are some of the issues that, that, that you face? Well, that means that your employees have to be, as I said, I want to be the lowest standard in my company for, for knowledge. So that means if we're hiring geeks, you know, we're hiring people that can understand data that want mm -hmm. to do that, then that's not what I see the vacation rental business as. I see it as this authentic human experience. So you got to balance it. You got to find the balance where you have to put aside enough mm -hmm. funding to hire people that can interpret the data and use it correctly and get filtered down to your marketing and all that. But, um, but you also have to have the person shaking hands at the front desk or going to the houses and meeting you know, on a one-to-one on -one basis as much as possible. Yeah, and like, you know, it's um, very important. Like we've looked at data of what our guests are looking for when they come to our area, 
what our owners are like. What, I mean, it's just not guess. You're all, I'm also looking at owner data. And I'm also, how do I get them? And like, you know, when you talk about regulation, I was going to say, now you're going to have a whole database, just so you know. Um, <laughs> when you talk about that, but when you, um, and how do you interface with them? Because it's very, um, it's not, if I have not engaged a company and I suddenly get emails from a company, I feel like it's a breach of privacy. But when you just see something that's not as invasive, like a Facebook ad or something like that, so you just got to look at your data and make sure that you're not trying, you know, you're not being too big brother. Right. Like, you know, you have the, like, the remarketing ads and you have the abandonment cart things. I mean, there's things you can do to really gather data. You just got to make sure that you're not too aggressive right. with it. But, but it's our data on the one hand, mm -hmm. but also... What are, what are the OTAs doing with our data? A lot. What are what is a, a situations where the OTA is also your software provider? Where does that go and how is that used? Right. It's it's actually a lot of it. I hate to say this, um, is used against the small the property management company owners mm -hmm. because our our customers are being they have first access. Mm -hmm. they, they're they're advertising right. to our customer base. They learn from us. They learn from attending the VRMA uh, conferences, and now they're offering the same mm -hmm. kinds of things that we offer to our right. our customer base. So they're they competing with us. Yet we're paying them mm -hmm. to advertise. So we're paying them to advertise our properties, mm -hmm. and then they take them at the level before we can get to them. And th talk about disruptors. Yeah. So it's book direct day, and every day should be book direct day. Right. Um, Last question for both of you. Um, what is this industry not paying enough attention to, but really should be paying more attention to? Might it be, be even a continuation of what you just said, but mm -hmm. anything, anything? In, uh, in uh, well, you hit the, the nail on the head with the data. I mean, I won't go into my background, but of data issues, but um, it's very important that you keep that to yourself. Um, that's something like I, I've seen with OTAs and with property management software, because it's overreaching. Um, for me, but that's something I'm concerned about. Yeah. Who owns a customer? Can you have, should you own a customer? What's your relationship to that customer? How, who who you, owns the data? Mm -hmm. Who owns How, how the do you data? protect your privacy? How do you grow mm -hmm. if you're competing against someone that you're paying? Um, I think that's a major, major concern. And and in terms of the future, I see you know you know because I'm an anthropologist by training and. I'm also a positive thinker, but I would like to see a much more diverse population using vacation rentals. And I, a lot of it has to do with the marketing. Um, you know, not everybody who comes to a vacation home is college educated. Um, many people don't have a lot of money and they come from the inner city, but they're entitled to vacations as well. The people of color, they need to be marketed to these people and mm -hmm. not being afraid of bringing people that are not like your community into your community. And many people of color are not at all interested in coming to some of the destinations where we have vacation rental, you know, where the vacation rental industry is. So I think we should have more urban um, experiences where um, it, it's a mixture, where there's a sharing of, of needs and cultures. And I think that vacation rental managers and rent by owners need to be aware of what of who the population is out there. It's a big population of people. Right, just be more inclusive and Very also much more inclusive. realize that there are some missed opportunities. More than some. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that is a big difference than it was a years ago is it's more, there's a lot more urban now. Yeah. Vacation rentals where there wasn't 15 some years ago. But, which is great. It's great. It means that there's more opportunity to go vacation. Right. Anything I didn't ask you ladies about that you would like to add or anything that you, you definitely well, want our audience to know? I just hope this gift and you know, other uh, public relations, you know, that, that they, that those of you who are writing about the industry understands the industry too, and mm -hmm. doesn't just get your information from the, I don't, I'm sure I'm not saying this quite right, but from the data that the OTAs might have. Or, it's you know, you accurate. need to reach, you, not you so much, Deanna, but <laughs> your industry needs to reach where it's authentic and really learn about what's going on in the industry and not make some assumptions about who we are, because right. that doesn't work. And you know, and, and that's a really good point about the authenticity, because our industry is based on relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's, I was talking about like, when we had a, like, um, 
software we've used forever, and I'm talking all kinds of stuff. But it's like a it's a relationship. Like I I grow accustomed and really close to a lot of the vendors I use, so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm like I'm breaking up with someone after not using them for ten years because it's a relationship business because that's what we're good at. I mean, we do hospitality. I you know I build relationships with owners. I build relationship with guests. I build relationship with vendors. But that's across the board, and so it's you know I, we the more that we can grow and show the 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 world vacation rentals is a place of authenticity mm -hmm. it's a place to enjoy to relax to get away together those kind of things i think are really big for all of us involved and will only grow our industry in this space better and, and i would like to um we've certainly discussed this and we're trying to do this at the membership level mm -hmm. but if you wanted to learn about hotel management you could apply if you want to go to graduate school. You could apply to Cornell, um, and near us, the Endicott, uh, which is a four-year college, has a school of hospitality, and um, but there's no courses on vacation rental management, mm. and that's something that I would see as a major goal for our industry: is let's get people educated into our industry and have them learn what it is we do, so that we can continue. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much on that note. Thank you so much thank for, for taking the time Thanks. to speak thank with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us.